Hello everybody, it is Michaela Nicole and welcome back to my channel. Today is another camera video, kind of. We're doing something slightly different today. Um, it's still a camera video, but today we are going to be talking about how I find and collect cameras. I'll have another video coming up soon, very soon, about how I restore my cameras. Um, but for now, we're going to talk about how I find them, where I get them, how I know if I'm getting them for a good value, so on and so forth. So the first thing we're going to talk about is how to find a camera. Now, there's a few ways you can find a vintage camera. One, you can go to estate sales or auctions or antique stores. So that's like the physical way to go. You can go into those stores look around oftentimes um if you're in an older like a way older area you're gonna be more apt to find them um as opposed to somewhere that's more modern um just because they go pretty quick and they might not be there but if you're in an area that might have some older folks in it you're kind of likely to find some of these cameras um you go into the antique store, look around, do some sleuthing, and you'll find them. Oftentimes, they're either all kind of grouped together or they're really hidden. I've never really seen onesie, twosie cameras on display unless they're like in a shelf up high. The other place you can find them if you aren't in the mood to go look around a real life store is the internet. Now, my most trusted and valued resource is eBay, of course, we all know eBay, um, but it's just the easiest. I know that my information is relatively safe on eBay um, and their policies are pretty good. So if you get scammed, it's kind of easy to fix and the sellers have, um, you know, ratings and comments and all that kind of stuff. The only downside the con, I should say, one of the biggest cons to using eBay as opposed to going into a real store is you can't necessarily inspect the full camera. You're basically just going on the pictures that are provided and that's not always the most accurate representation of what you're gonna get. Pictures can be edited, colors can be altered, so just be aware sometimes things are not always as they seem on the internet i know we all know this but it goes to online shopping as well whereas in person you can handle the actual object look at it find the damage and decide whether or not you're okay with it if it's something you'd be able to fix if that's something you're interested in and yeah but most of my cameras recently have come from ebay um but every so often you get lucky and you get the full antiquing experience of going in and um, you know, you can haggle the prices a little bit and all that kind of fun stuff. So either antique stores around you, estate sales, those kinds of things, or eBay and similar retail websites. Now, you've found your camera. How do you know if you're getting a good value? My favorite ways to figure out if I'm getting a good value for the camera that I'm looking at I'm going to go specifically off of eBay to start with, is to look at the camera. Oftentimes, if you have someone who doesn't necessarily know much about cameras, they'll list it and just kind of list the words they can see on the camera, but that's not always correct. Um, so if you're able to, if the pictures are good enough quality, zoom in, look really close for the name of the camera. Then what you'll do is, depending on the brand, you will look it up. If you're looking at a Kodak camera, specifically brownie cameras, the website browniecamera.com is amazing. Um, I'll link it in the description down below. That's brownie-camera.com. They have almost every, if not every, brownie camera listed. So you can look up the name of camera and it should be able to pop up and give you some information. It also has a lot of background about um, specifically Kodak brownie cameras. So, but what I like about this is that you can click on it. It'll have pictures listed at the top so you can look and compare and make sure your camera is accurate. It tells you what type of camera it is, when it was made, when it was discontinued, the type of film it uses, um, 
and it sometimes will have like the original price back when the camera was made on it and it gives you a little bit of a description about the camera so for me who likes the history of the cameras I like to get them when I feel they have some sort of value in terms of their history or their story either uh, personal story or just the history in their lineup of cameras um, I really appreciate this website is where I get a lot of my information but it also kind of helps you realize the value because oftentimes the eBay, eBay sellers don't have a year listed. They don't necessarily know, and it might be wrong, if they didn't feel the need to go into an in-depth dive into what dates could be there. So make sure you check that out. If it's Polaroid, you kind of... I tend to just go on uh, the Polaroid Wikipedia. You can look up... Um, complete list of Polaroid cameras and there's a Wikipedia page with almost all of them listed or just look up that specific camera and it's release year, um, it's production year, things of those na that nature and you should be able to find some pretty solid information as long as you look at one to two websites. We're not here for an exact science, okay? I understand we research with more than one to two websites but this is camera collecting not a research paper we're okay. So once you have your year figured out, you've decided you really do like this camera, it's time to look for price. Now, if I'm at an in-person store, in an antique store, I really quickly will look that information up. If it's a brownie camera, which it often is for me, I find that camera on this website. I really quickly kind of glance through the readings, make sure it lines up. And if it does, then I check eBay and I'll look at all the most recent listings and you can see what the starting prices are going for. The ones that are getting bid on a lot are pretty reliable. You can tell that people want them enough when they're getting bid for high values. Like if a camera has 14 bidders and it's up to a hundred bucks, then you know that you found something good. Um, for me, I average 20 to $30 for a camera. But that's, the higher it goes, the more risky we're being. Um, I'll pay more if it's really old and in really good condition, those need to line up. If it's really old and in decent condition, but it's something that I just really think the history of is awesome. I'll pay higher if it comes with the box and manuals. And I'll pay more if it's an add-on, as in, well, you'll see this in the newest camera video I'm going to put up soon. Um, I just got a camera that came with the boxes, all of the manuals, the camera, of course, and then it's two attachments, an exposure meter and a flash bulb. So I paid about 50 for that whole package. It was from the 50s in really good condition. In that case, I was willing to spend a lot more because I could see from the pictures that things were in really good condition, the boxes didn't have writing on them, all those kinds of things. But I tend to lowball it and stay around the 20s, unless I just really have to have it. But check your sources, check eBay. Um, you can also go to this other website called collectablend.com. I'll also link that in the description and you Google the camera name and it'll tell you current eBay listings, it'll tell you store listings, it'll tell you auction prices, and it'll tell you by condition um, what value it has, you know, poor condition, average condition, and mint condition, what it's reselling for in like the antique collector world of like the elite collectors. You know what I mean? The ones who are gonna go to the auction house with the little paddles, <laughs> those kind of people. It'll tell you a little bit sometimes the fluctuations of the price of the camera, so if it just lowballed, you might be. If you're not looking to resell, then that's your time to grab it. Another thing that's just important in general, um, if you're deliberately looking to find a camera, I would recommend either coming up with a really specific camera you're looking for if you're gonna do it online, um, or if you're gonna go into a store, you kind of have to be the opposite and not be looking for a particular camera. Cause I've noticed for me, if I go on eBay, sometimes I'll scroll through for ideas, but I have a goal to collect one camera from every decade, starting at 1900, going into 
2000s. So for me, for a while it was easy because I was just looking and you know, oh, that one looks really cool. That one's interesting. I enjoy that one. So I could look and kind of pick and choose what cameras I wanted without real regard for what year they were made. I was just picking them because I liked them and that's totally fine. But it kind of got to the point where I was like, oh, I really have this goal now. And half of my cameras are from the 50s and 60s. So I need to stop buying from those decades and start looking older. And that's where it gets a little tricky. Um, and so looking online is kind of the easiest way to find those, in my opinion, if you look specifically for do some research and figure out what cameras you're gonna look for and then look for them online. Whereas if you're gonna go in person, I find it more helpful to just be willing to go and look and explore because it's obviously, you don't have the globe at your fingertips if you're in a little antique store in your hometown. So you kind of have to be willing to move on the fly um, and do some real quick research. You kind of have to be fast at reading, especially if the store owner is going to be there um, like right there kind of watching because you know they're the ones who set the price most of the time unless it's a booth antique store so you kind of have to have to pick your battles weigh it out is this camera really worth more to you than your lunch the next day I don't know make smart choices please I'm not telling you to spend your money <laughs> on old cameras that might not work speaking of working um, that's a whole nother ball game. I do not deal in working versus not. I only collect because I like the aesthetics and the history of old cameras. If they work, great. Super exciting. I love that. I have some that do work. But if you're looking online, you cannot test a camera online. And even if it says it's been tested, that does not always mean it works. I've gotten one camera one time that came with an authenticity tag that stated it had been tested two years prior and worked. But that doesn't mean within the last couple of years that it was sitting, that it, you know, something could have happened to make it break. I didn't buy it for that fact, I just thought it was really cool and it was awesome that it came with that authenticity. But working cameras, especially old, old ones, to a certain degree, we hit a point where they don't make the film anymore. So you can't, <laughs> you don't really have an option um, unless you're gonna try and modify some film cartridges. But most of the instant Polaroid cameras have film currently being produced for them. That's a different story. You're gonna be paying more if you're getting a working camera. So just keep that in mind and do not always trust what's being said. It does not always mean it will work. And I've never tried this or done this, but I feel like if you went into an antique store and they had a camera um, and you had like a film pack, if it was a Polaroid, say, they might be willing to let you put the, the pack in there. Cause you know, if you have an empty film cartridge, the battery is still good for X amount of time, which is how I test cameras. They'd probably let you put it in there if you ask permission but I've never tried. Let me know if you try and it works because it would be great to know. <laughs> but I'll just break it down into three steps to end it off. Research, research again, and then buy it. <laughs> Figure out what you want. Make sure you're not getting ripped off. Get the thing. Those are my tips. <laughs> If anyone has any questions or wants to know more or has any ideas of something you'd like to hear from me about camera collecting, let me know in the comments down below. And thank you so, so, so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, learned something new. Maybe you're also gonna go start a camera collection. Let me know, let me know if you do. Tell me what your first camera was. I'm interested to know. Thank you for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye.